Hello, 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 my brothers and sisters. How you doing this evening? I apologize. I had some technical difficulties, but I am back at the dinner table. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The, the soul food is still hot. Come on back in, my brothers and my sister. We got a good show this evening. Come on in, come on in. Uh, this show is about family, so while we are gathering for this family meal, this good soul food, my brother and sister, when you come in, you can invite some of your friends in to be able to get some of this good, good soul food. You know I'm going to bring it out real hot. For those of you that are coming to the table, I apologize for being late. I had some technical difficulties, and I had to log back in, so I apologize, I apologize, I apologize, but tonight's show it's going to be very good, my brothers, and very good, my sisters. So come on in, come on in. Those of you that are on the book, you can like and share. And those of you that are on the tube, I would like for you to uh, become a subscriber. It's free of charge. And not only that, you I would like for you to share and like, okay? So it's that simple. It's free. So for those of you, while I'm in the course of talking at the dinner table, I want you to understand this. Sometime when I call out names, if you're on the book, you will not be able to see the ones on the two. And those of you that are on the two, when I talk sometime, you may not be able to see the names of the people, you know, uh, from Facebook. OK, so with that said, my brother and sister, we about to get into this good conversation tonight. So I hope that you enjoy tonight's dinner because it's hot. It's very hot. I know I had, like I said, I had some technical difficulty. I rewound that food up, that soul food, and now I'm here. If this is your first time coming to dinner with me, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship, my brother and sister, basically from a spiritual point of view. And when I say a spiritual point of view, I view a relationship how God started a relationship. First of all, God had a unique relationship with the man, Adam. Secondly, he had a unique relationship with the woman, Eve. He brought the woman back. He represented the woman to the man. And in the presence of God, Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I should call a woman because she came from man. That's the type of relationship I believe in. Now, if you're at the dinner table and you think and you into another type of relationship, you have what is called free will. You can do whatever you choose to do. However, I talk about the relationship with that between a man and woman, but I encourage you to look at it. Thank you, Sister Flo, for coming back in at the dinner table. I had a little technical difficulty and the rest of you. I apologize, but we're about to get into it. Now, tonight, my brothers and tonight, my sister, we're going to talk about a relationship. Well, not a relationship, but the topic is how to make a woman love you. Again, tonight's topic is how to make a woman love you. Now, I know there are some of you, how you doing, Sister Scott? Now, I know there are some of you that saying, how can a man make a woman love him? Now, in actuality, a, a man cannot force a woman to love him. But there are some things that a man uh, can do to enhance or encourage a woman to be all in into the relationship. You know what I mean? So there is a way for a woman to love you, brother. But let me let me give you an understanding, some of you brothers and some of you sisters, let me give you a, a clear understanding. Men and women, they look at love from two different perspectives, okay? A man idea of love is not the same idea how a woman views love and vice versa. A woman's uh, viewpoint on how to be loved is not the same as a man way of being uh, loved. You understand that? Now, how you doing, mother? Thank you for coming back into the dinner table. The food is still warm. Now, just look at this. Sisters, when it comes to a man seeking love from you, his idea, a lot of men do not uh, verbal, verbalize to you what he's looking for in a relationship. And there's a lot of you women too out there. You do not verbalize what you're looking for in a relationship when it comes to the topic called love. You see, it's 
it's really simple and we need to understand it. If we understand this basic principle, the relationship between a man and woman can grow deep and it could, I mean, it could be strong. We got to understand it clearly. And I always say this, my brother and sister, I always say this, women are emotional. How you doing, Sister Teresa? Welcome to the dinner table. Men are analytical. What do I mean by that? Women express what they, women express themselves through their feelings. That's what you men need to understand. Women express their love through their feelings. Sister, you need to understand that men express their love by their minds. You understand? By their mind. So a woman go into the thing called love with her emotions and the man go into the relationship with his mind. We were created differently. God created the man, but he made the woman. I'm going to say that two more times. God created the man, but he made the woman. God created the man, but he, he made the woman. So it's different. We came into this world differently, so we, we need to understand this. Now, we're going to go to God's word before we embark on this important topic tonight. Now, it is written in Ephesians 5, 5.25, Ephesians 5.25, 5.25, and I'm going to read this from God's word. God's word say, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. Now, what does that really mean? husband love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This mean brother, it said husband, that's the hashtag. If you want to call it a hashtag, you need to be in order to love a woman, how she need to be loved. What is your position to the woman? Are you her boyfriend? Are you her boo? Are you someone that creeped through in the middle of the night? Or are you her husband? God's words say, husband, love your wives. That means that if when I it say husband, it is it's talking about godly men, it's not talking about worldly men. So there's a, a difference, it's talking about godly men an apostle uh paul is talking to godly men he's not talking to the world so what i'm talking to you about my brother and sister the world will not understand what i'm talking about they, they will not understand because the world got a different view point and they move when it comes to love they got all the different uh things about love but it's it's not real when it comes to real love Real low, how you doing, Sister Cynthia? Thank you for coming to the dinner table. When it comes to real law, the Bible clearly defines what this man needs to be. The Bible clearly defines that this man should be a husband. Now, can a man love a woman if he's not her husband? He could like her a whole lot, but he's not all in. A man, in order for a man to love a woman, this man needs to view this woman and make and move towards being in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship. Whereas this man, he decides, he selects the woman and he moves in. How you doing, Sister Cheryl? And he moves in to marry her. That's how God wants it to be. That's why when Paul said, Hope and love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. That's why he, he specifically did not say boyfriend or uh, a friend and all those other titles. He specifically said husband. And when he said husband, he's not talking about any husband. He's talking to a man that fallen God through his son, Jesus Christ. This is, the, this is who Paul is addressing. And this is who I'm addressing. 
I'm addressing a man that's fallen Christ. So if a man fallen Christ, this man would understand I must love a woman like Christ loved the church and he gave himself up for her. Now, what does it mean Christ gave himself up for the church? Christ gave his life up for the church. The church is a group of called out people. So a man has to model uh, how Christ loved the church. I'm going to touch on that a little later on in the broadcast. And then we're going to go to this other scripture. The other scripture state, and I'm going to read it from God's word again. It said, and it is written in Colossians 3.19. This is Colossians 3.19. Colossians 3.19. Colossians 3.19. It states this. It said, husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. You understand? So if you want a woman to love you, I'm giving you some strategies straight from God's word. This is the game. This is the best game plan of how to get a woman to love you, brother. It, again, in Colossians 3.19, it said, husband, love your wife and do not be harsh with them. What does that mean, not be harsh with them? You can't be nasty to them. You have to know how to talk to the woman. You understand? You have to know how to talk to her. Not only talk to her, you have to talk into her. You see, your words, brother, it has the power of life and death. It has the power. Words have weight. Your words are so important, brother, whereas on when you go in front of Jesus, the, it say he's going to judge you, not based on how you act, but the words that come out of your mouth. Jesus is going to judge you based on Positive word, negative word, or words that in between. How you doing, brother Nate? Thank you for coming to the dinner table. So let me tell you this. When the Bible say in Colossians 3, 19, it says, hold and love your wife and do not be harsh to them. You have to be, you have to watch your words, brothers. Remember, you are analytical. Women are emotional. So when you talk to a woman, you got to understand this. And I have said it before. You cannot talk to a woman like you talk to a man. How you doing, uh, Sister uh, Maxine? You cannot talk to a woman like you talk to a man. Thank you, uh, Sister Maxine. You, Maxine said, I'm, I really enjoy your teaching. Good evening. Thank you so much, Sister. Thank you for coming to the dinner table. So listen carefully. Brother, do you ever consider in your mind before words come out of your mouth, the word, how they're going to affect her? You see, when you talk to a woman, you have to talk to her. You have to have, you have to talk to a sweet. Okay. You have to talk to a sweet. You have to talk to her gentle. You can't, you can't talk to her with rough. Your words have to be very delicate when you talk to her. Because see, when you talk to her, actually you talking into her because she listening with her ear. Women, when you actually women listen with their hearts, and you want to be real, real technical about it. Women listen with their heart. The words go into their ear, but you're planting words into her heart. Whatever words you plant into that woman's heart, brother, it's going. It's a seed. Your words are seeds. Your word is either going to bring her up and lift her up or you're going to debase her and bring her down. So you have to be very careful how you talk to her. You And, you, and even if you got names for a woman, you have to choose pleasant names, real pleasant names. The names that you call her, that's going to affect her. There are some, there are some men right now that enjoy calling women the B word. And I, if you don't know the B word, I'm not cussing but what I'm about to say, but you all have heard it before. There are a lot of men that call the, uh, the woman the female version of a dog that start with a B, right? And you all know what I'm talking about. And then there are some men that address women, their own women, as a garden tool. And when I say a garden tool, I'm not talking about a shovel. You know what I'm talking about in the in today terminology of 304 so you cannot call women though acid words brother call when you, especially a daughter of god you cannot be talking to them that way because you will break them 
even when you talk to a woman, you're a woman, when you talk to her and you whatever you say is going to affect her. You got to understand it's going to affect her, even though, you see, this is how we operate, brother. When we say, if we say something to another man, it's like, if the words can roll over, men normally could take a, a hit with words. They normally can because men hit uh would take words and it flip. It's just like when you're looking at a football game. Some women they might look at a coach fussing at a football player, right? But a lot of times they listen, but it really don't get into them. But you see, that's sister, that's what you think. It really don't get into the man when a coach is hard on a man. Because he's listening, he's analytical, he doesn't take it to heart. But if a coach, if a woman is playing football and a coach comes down on the woman and he and he talk hard to the woman, it's gonna bring her down. And it's gonna affect her performance. And when I, this this is what I'm talking about. How you talk to your woman is going to affect her performance. When I talk about her performance, I'm not talking about physically in a sexual way i'm not talking about that i'm talking about what that woman will do for you you want that woman to buy into you 100 you understand that what you want you want her to buy 100 so that's why you have to use uplifting words to lift her up when you talk to her you're supposed to encourage her if it's something that you think will break her you need to find, you need to modify your words so you won't break them. Because even when you say something to a woman, and if they say, well, they're all right, they're not all right. They're not all right. If you say the wrong thing to a woman, it's hard for them to let go. It's really hard for women to let go. Let's be real. How you doing, Sister Harris? Sister Harris say, I had a man talk to me any kind of way, and I walked right out of his life. You see what I'm talking about, brother? You you have to understand how to talk to her. You see, when you talk to her, you're talking actually into the woman. Your words have power. Like God, word, God, the Bible said your the word has the power of life and death. If your word has the power of life and death, what that tell you? You have to be extremely careful. When it comes to a woman, you got to be on all point. You got to utilize your wisdom, your knowledge your understanding and your discernment when it comes to a woman. And then how you act towards her, not only your words, but your action has to match your words. If you want to make a woman love you, your words have to match your action. You cannot tell a woman that you're going to do something and you do not do it. Because women are good, women are good to say this. You told me you were going to do that. They would throw it up in your face. A woman, if you tell a woman something, even the best one, they, they might the best one might not say nothing right then, but they're going to take note. And then they're going to pull you to the carpet and say, you said you were going to do this. So whenever you tell a woman something, you have to do it. There's no excuses. Your action has to match your words. Your words and action are on a proverbial scale. Your words and action, they have to be balanced, brother. If you want to make a woman love you, they got to be balanced. And if your words are balanced, what does that uh, tell the woman? What, how does she feel? She feel like she can trust you. She women want have a they have it where they want a sense of security, which leads to as it is written in Colossians 319, 319, 319. It said, Husband, love your wife and do not be harsh with them. Harsh means not on your words, you cannot backhand them. You can't backhand them, brother. You can't be choking their necks. You can't put whatever size shoe you got in their rear ends. You can't do that. You can't touch them. If you touch a woman, you don't touch her in a, a harsh way or a violent way. You have to, uh, Cheryl would say, repeat the scripture. It's Colossians 3.19. Colossians 3.19, Cheryl. 
Uh, it said, "Husband, Lord, your wife, and do not be harsh with them." Brother, if you put if you put your hand on a woman, you put your hand on a woman in a loving way. If you want to make her love you, I'm telling you how to do it straight from God's word, not from the relationship culture. They don't tell you what I'm telling you. Relationship culture tell you something from the world standpoint. The world viewpoint on how to love a woman. That is the world way. You, sister, you need a man that's going to love you from a spiritual way. Spiritual men can love you in a way that surpasses all understanding. So that's why you, you need a man to love you how you need to be loved, not how you want to be loved. Number three, Another word from God's word. Notice I'm saying from God's word. Notice I'm not going to what this man say how to love a woman or what this woman saying how to love a woman, right? I'm telling you straight from God's word. Now it say, as it is written in 1 Peter 3, 7, 1 Peter 3, 7, 1 Peter 3, 7, it say, husband in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as being with the weaker partner, showing them honor as co heirs of the grace of life, so that your prayer will not be hindered. I have to, I have to tell a lot of men this over and over and over again. When you live with a woman, now let me back up when I say when you live with the woman. Peter's telling you what type of man live with a woman. What did Peter say? Peter said husband in the same way it did not say boyfriend in the same way it did not say um friend in the same way it did not say uh the midnight rider in the same way it said husband in the same way uh live with your wife it say it don't say live with your girlfriend it don't say live with your boo it don't say sleep over many days and nights and years with the, uh, the woman. It doesn't say that. It identified a position. It identified, <coughs> excuse me, it identified a husband and it identified wife because God is talking through Peter. And God is telling you what position a man has to be in and it's telling the woman what position she needs to be in. Brother, if you want a woman to really love you, if you really, really want to a woman to love you. What is your role in her life? What is your role in her life? Any man that refute what I'm telling you, you have to watch that man because there are a lot of men out there that are teaching other men. You don't, you, you don't need no wife. You could, you could just date them. You could just date them. And what they're actually saying, you could use them. You see, when a spiritual man have a wife, he's not he's not using the woman. Spiritual men, listen to what I'm saying carefully. Spiritual men do not use women. Spiritual men utilize women. And what type of woman does a spiritual man utilize? He utilizes his wife because the Bible clearly say that the woman was created for the man, not the man for the woman. So when God bring when God handpick a woman and bring that woman before the man. That man needs to be husband-minded. He must view that woman as God brought this woman to me for a particular reason. That's what you have to see. That's why, brother, you need to have Christ in you so you can see what type of woman is, is coming in front of you because Satan will bring some uh, women in front of you too. So you have to use your discernment. But we're talking about God. When God, when God bring a woman to you, brother, let me tell you this. It's in his time. Whenever God bring a woman into a man's life, a spiritual man, it's that man time. Spiritual men, and I always say this, spiritual men do not run after women. Spiritual men do not pursue women like you are a lion and she is a uh, a deer or something, and you running after them. That's how worldly men do it. If you look at how worldly men go after women, it's just like looking at uh, the safari on TV. Whenever, when you look at these uh, animal channel and you see how animals 
chase other animals. When they chase other animals, why do they chase other animals? Just think about it. Why do these other animals chase these other animals? Do you think they want to get to know them and be friends with them? No. They chase them because they want to consume them. Any man that runs after a woman and pursue a woman like an animal or a dog or a lion or whatever, he is trying to, how shall I say it? He's trying to he's trying to consume you. And it's not in a positive way. Worldly men run after a woman. Spiritual men never do that because you see, a spiritual man, he's all about God being the first, even though he's imperfect. And he knows that God is going to bring him a woman that's made, tailor-made for him. And when God brings a woman to a man that's tailor-made for him, that's the best woman and the right woman for that particular man. If you, brother, if you want to make a woman love you, you have to listen to what God say. And not only that, brother, when God, if God bring a woman to you, you got to be very careful how you talk to her. And you got to be very careful how you uh, react to her. Don't put no hands on her. Don't talk hard to her because if you do, and if you got something that you really want to come in your life, you could pray to God all you want to. It's dangerous to uh, marry a godly woman. Brother, it's hazardous to your health if you marry a spiritual woman from God. Because if you marry a spiritual woman from God, God will not listen to the words that you say. Because the Bible clearly said that your prayers will be hindered. If you want to boss up, let me tell you something. Do, do you not understand this? And a lot of worldly men, a lot of worldly men know this. A lot of worldly men that's over Fortune 500 clubs, guess what? Majority of them have wives. What that tell you, majority of them have wives. When you really look at it, majority of the men and the men that are successful in life, majority of the men that are successful, they have a wife. And brother, the best time to, to try to have a wife is when God is bringing you up when you don't have nothing. Because, you see, if, if you have a whole bunch of stuff when God elevates you, brother, you don't know what these other women like. Because when God starts elevating you spiritually and when God starts elevating you physically with wealth and assets and stuff like that, do you not know that gonna that's a magnet for some women? Especially if you're a handsome guy and you got yourself together and you got a little position, if God give you uh, some spotlight in this world, your spotlight is going to radiate and it's going to uh, pull some women to you. And a lot of women that you're going to get their attention are worldly women. Worldly women are going to come in when you already have stuff. So the best time, that's why you need to be with God when you're young, when you're coming up. When you coming up, the woman that you get that God bring your way, that woman is going to be the woman basically for you if God is doing it. Let me give you an example. And you all have heard, you all know about this person. Let's look at LeBron James. I know a lot of people don't like him, but a lot of people do like him. But let's look at LeBron history a little bit. Let's look at LeBron history a little bit. When LeBron was little LeBron's, when he didn't have nothing, he did not have nothing. He met Savannah. When he met Savannah, he was just little LeBrons. When he met Savannah, he was just playing uh, basketball on the court. Then he got to high school, but guess what? He still, Savannah was still there. When he had nothing. So Savannah, she seen something what LeBron's had. You see, she seen that LeBron's had something more than basketball. You see, a lot of people might think that Savannah uh, uh, hooked up with LeBron 
when he had something, and some people think that she hooked up because he could play ball real good. No. She's seen that too, but she's seen something else on LeBron. When you when you observe LeBron from the outside, look at he he's very careful how he moves. He careful how he talk. He careful how he moves. He give attention to his wife. He give attention to his children. He give attention to the world. He it's not all about him. A spiritual man, man supposed to be about God, his wife, his children, and the world, not to himself. And when God bring a special woman into that man's life, brother, if God bring a special woman into your life, don't ever kick her to the curb. When God keep elevating you, because a lot of men, when God elevates you, you want you want to go to the other side of town. You want to go to where the grass is greener. And you want to kick that woman that was there with you when you was coming up. You want to kick her to the curb because she might she not she don't look like those other women. She not fine like those other women, right? She might got a little stomach, she might got a little cellulite and all that kind of stuff, but you want to go to the old women that had all those plastic surgeries and stuff, right? But they don't have integrity in everything on the inside, and they do not have the presence of God in there. And then when you get with these wrong women, they want to get pregnant on you and mess up your home and mess up your, your the thing that God gave you with that particular woman. So what I'm saying when God bring a woman with you, as he, as he's elevating you, brother, he's elevating that woman. As it is written in uh, Ephesians 5.28, as it is written in Ephesians 5.28, Ephesians 5.28 said, in the same way, husband ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who love his wife love himself. You understand that? God words say, if you want to know whether a man really love himself, and he's married, if a man love himself, watch how he treat his wife. How you doing, Sister Stephanie? Welcome to the dinner table. If a man love himself, look at how he operate with his wife. If a man love his wife, how you doing, Sister T? Welcome to the dinner table. If a man love his wife, guess what? You're going to see it on her face. You're going to see it on her face. Most of the time, if a man treating a woman right, guess what? Her heart is smiling. So if her heart is smiling, guess what? It's going to show on her face. Maxine said, why do most men abandon their wife when they get established financially? Because, Sister Maxine, before I answer Sister Maxine, let me tell you all what's going on. You might not know what's going on. I'm on two different platforms. I'm on the book. Some of you on the book. You don't see what the people from uh, the tube are saying. And some of you on the tube, you don't see what the people on, on the book are saying when I call out names. So believe me, I'm talking to two different platforms. It's like the proverbial killing two birds with one stone, okay? But to answer your question, sister, a lot of men think that they leave the woman because they think that they have, have, have outgrown the woman. A lot of time when a man leave a woman, these are the the uh, proverbial um, guys, the prodigal sons of finance. A lot of guys, when you arrive, you do that. You get butt wild, and that woman loved you. That woman was there when you was when God was bringing you up. So I'm telling you, don't leave a good woman when God is blessing you. Because those other women, they are scavengers. What is a scavenger? It's like one of those vultures. Brother, let me tell you something. When God is elevating you and you got a good woman, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're, you're going to become more attracted, even if you look like little boo-boo. Even if you look like little, little frog. If you look like a little frog, when God elevating you, that's going to attract women. 
because they want what you got. Even though you look like a little toad frog, they're going to want what you got. And you think they love you, right? But the woman that were with you and you look like a little toad frog, that woman actually love you. That woman kissed you and you became a prince. You understand that? That's right, little, little toad. She kissed you and you became a prince. When she kissed you and you became a prince, it got to your head and now you think these other women really want you for who you are. They want what you got. Some brothers, you don't understand this. So I'm telling you some things from God's word, how to make a woman love you. Now question, brothers, how do you view women? Sister Harris said, if a man treat his mother and sister with respect and love and have a good relationship with them, his wife is going to be treated good. Sister Rhonda Harry, why you beat me to the point? I'm trying to get my stuff out, sister, and I was just about to do that. Did you sneak and look at my notes, Sister Rhonda Harry? Did you look at some of my notes? Did you, Rhonda? But anyway, thank you, sister, because I, that's what I, I was headed to. Question. Brothers, how do you view a woman? How do you view a woman? This is very critical. Men that talk nasty and down about women that call women 304s, the old garden twos, or the female version of a dog, and they've put all women in a bucket and said no woman ain't no good. The only thing a woman is good for, so they say, is to make sure the house is clean, take care of the children, make sure my, my food is hot when I come in, wash my clothes, get in that bedroom and get on your back, and I'm going to give you my best two minutes, and I don't care about how you feel, I'm going to leave you hanging, so you can go get that, you know, that stuff, I ain't know, I'm going to leave you hanging, and then I want you to shut up. That's how word, a lot of worldly men do it. You see, worldly men, they shine in front of other people. But when they're home, they treat their wives badly. They mentally abuse women. If they don't put their hands on them, they mentally abuse them by their words. So a lot of men, they mentally abuse their women and they think, and they want the woman to smile about it. Why would you want to some men, and I'm not and I'm not talking to you, you spiritual brother. I'm talking about the other guys. How can a man verbally and physically treat a woman wrong and he expect for the woman to smile and do good? And then turn around and tell the woman, you don't support me. You don't do this, you don't do that, but he don't count what all this other stuff the woman doing. The woman, you broke her. At the beginning, you, you said all the, the nice things. You were like Prince Charming. When you were like Prince Charming, you got her. And now you got her, and you treating her worse than a doll. Some of you guys, not my not my brothers, not my holy, not my holy spiritual brother, these worldly men. Some of you, brother, you treat your, your rock wider, your bulldog. Your double my pinch are better than your woman. That's right. You treat your own dog better than your, your woman. You put her last on the list, but you want her to love you, right? You can't, you can't. The seed you plant, brother, the seed you plant is what you're going to get. Which leads to this. Most men, now all men have a mama. Every man that came into this world have a mama, except for Adam. Adam was the only one that did not have a mama. Everybody else, if you didn't have a mama, email me, let all of us know that you, you never had a mama and you came in like Adam. We we waiting for this. You Do you all want to see the guy that did not come in on the mama. He came in. The, he came on the world stage like Adam. Let's let's see who's gonna lie about this. 
while I get me a glass of water, let's see who's going to lie and say they don't have no mama or they didn't come through the, to the world into the world through a woman. Now, since nobody did not come up and say nothing foolish, when it comes to a woman, brother, you came into the world through a woman. A woman carried you possibly nine months unless she, she had you early due to complication. But most of the time, a woman carrying you for nine months. That's right. She takes she she uh going around the world of men with your big head, your big water head, and she taking you around in her stomach. I ain't talking to my spiritual brother. She taking you around, right? You come out of your mother's womb, you grow up, and let's say you have a real good mother that love you and everything, right? You have a real good mother that love you. So when this real good mother love you, and then you want to go out and treat a woman wrong. You want to call a woman all the negative name. You want to break another woman. What about your mama? Let's say your mama, do you, did you want your daddy to treat your mama the way you treat somebody else's daughter? Let's say your mama is dating someone and it's not your dad. Let's say your daddy passed away. And she engaged, your mom engaged. Do you want that man to talk harsh to your mom? Do you want him to hit your mom? You know what you'll do. You're not going to, you'll even stand up to your own daddy because you'll get tired of your daddy talking to your mama wrong. You will get tired of your daddy backhanding your mom. You're going to get to the point where you're going to defend your mom. Tell me you're not, I'm not right. You're going to defend your mom, right? You even get your own dad. If you see your dad doing wrong, you going to the family. It's going to build up and build up and build up, and you're going to intervene on behalf of your mama. Not only that, you may have a sister or sisters, right? You want to treat your sisters. You want you tr you love your sisters, right? Even if you and your sister have conflict, the bottom line is you love your sister. When you was growing up, and the neighborhood boys want to jump on you. Even if you and your sister, even if you and your sister had some problems, the neighborhood boys want to jump on you. When your, the neighborhood boys want to jump on you, who came to your rescue? Your sister. As a matter of fact, let me all tell you something. My sister, Rhonda Renee Tuma, even when we were little, I love my sister, right? I love my sister Ronnie Renee too. If we had a little disagreement, if we had a little disagreement, you better not let those neighborhood boys try to jump on me. Because it's just like you hear a bugle playing or a horn playing. If, if those guys want to surround me, guess who coming to guess who coming in? Rhonda Renee Stowe. Here she come. It's a, it'll be my sister and me against the the gift of neighborhood bullies. You understand what I'm saying? I love my sister. My natural sister that come from the seed of Johnny and he would plant her in the womb of Barbara. Now, do I want a man to mistreat my sister? Do I want a man to talk nasty to my sister? Do I want a man to lay hands on my sister? No. I do not. So if I don't want a man to talk nasty to my sister, or if I don't want a man to put hands on my sister, why would I, or why would a man want to talk nasty to another woman that's got brothers or a daddy or uncles and stuff? Why would he want to talk to bad to that woman? Why would he want to put hands on that woman when he will not, when he doesn't want nobody to treat his sister right? Let me go a little further. Let's say some men, they have a daughter or daughters, right? Your, your daughter, they so precious, right? You don't want no, even if you out there in the street, running the streets and stuff, brother. And let's say you're a player, brother. You out there running the streets and everything. You don't want nobody to play your daughter, do you? 
right? You don't want nobody to play your daughter. When I, you don't want nobody talking to your daughter wrong. You don't want nobody to um touch your daughter. If you find out that a, a guy said something wrong to your daughter, guess what? You're going to get up out of that laser boy chair, if they still make laser boy chair, you're going to get up and you're going to go, you want to ask your daughter where he at? Where he at? Or if he touch your daughter, you know what you're going to say? Where he at? Let's go. That's what you're going to do. You're going to defend your daughter, right? So how is it that some men, they want to talk bad, and touch other people's daughters when you don't want nobody to do your daughter that way. It's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. So question, how do you get a woman to love you? Or how do you make a woman love you? It's very simple. As Sherlock Holmes would say, to Watson, this is what Watson would say to Sherlock Holmes. Watson would say, the best example, Sherlock, is to pattern after Jesus. And then Sherlock Holmes would say, you saying something good, Watson. Pattern after Jesus. Now, when a man, when a man, let me see, Sister Ron said, she got my name. Yeah, Rhonda Renee. When a man pattern his, his lifestyle after Jesus, that's when a woman will love you. You see, you got to pattern your you got to pattern your life after Jesus, even though you're imperfect. You have to pattern your life after Jesus. And we're going to talk about how you pattern your life after Jesus. And when you pattern your life after Jesus, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen after you do it. First of all, when the Lord, okay, it's two different women that are going to come your way, brother. I talked to you spiritual brothers now. It's going to be two types of women coming your way. It's going to be worldly women and it's going to be spiritual women. It's going to be less spiritual women that come in your way than worldly women. Worldly women, they might excite you. Because you got a little lust in your heart. So they'll the worldly women, you like looking at them twerking stuff, right? But the woman, that good woman, you see her, she she like to go to worship service, right? She boring to you, right? But you want to see this woman doing her thing at the clubs and everything, right? You like that woman that come that uh work at P Valley, don't you? You like that woman that work at P Valley, don't you, brother? You don't like that woman that goes to the the church building, but you like the P Valley woman, don't you? Because she know how to walk, she know how to work that pole, don't you? But you're not interested in that woman that know how to work the words of God, are you? Huh? You're not ready for that, are you? And I'm not talking to you, your spiritual brother. You know better. I'm talking about the worldly men that looking at what I'm saying. So. You have to pattern. Now I'm talking to world. I'm talking to my spiritual brother, not to worldly men. Worldly men, in order to love a woman, you have to have a relationship with Christ. There's no other way. You don't. You don't have no manual. There's no skills. That no relationship coach. Called relationship coach. Other men, they teach you how to manipulate women. That's the bottom line. They tell you how to manipulate women. If she. If she calls you, don't answer the phone right now. Wait for an hour or so. Don't let her think Let her think that you busy. That's how the relationship code be talking to other men on, uh, on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. You know, they, they teach guys how to play mind games and how to manipulate women. Don't listen to that crap. And then some of the worldly men, they support these guys. That talk negative about women. They don't talk negative about their mama. They don't talk negative about their mother. I mean, their mother, their sister, or their daughter. They talk negative about other women. But they don't want nobody to talk about their mama, their, their sister, or their daughter, right? 
they don't want that. Pattern yourself after Jesus. Now, how does a man pattern himself after Jesus? Jesus had a relationship with God, his father, right? So, brother, you need to have a relationship with God, the father, through his son, Jesus. Step number one. After you have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus, we go to another step. And what that step is, what did Jesus always say he was about? Jesus was always about his work, right? What would Jesus work? To please the father, right? So you, brother, have to please God through Jesus. Your work is to please Jesus. What else did Jesus do? Jesus had an assignment. He had a life purpose. You have to have a life purpose. How do you get your life purpose? Just like God sent Jesus here into this world, you got to have a relationship with God through Jesus so Jesus can send you out into the world. Whatever position he puts you in, you have to go out in the world. Now, when you have, when you understand who you are, brothers, in Christ, once you understand that, you're going to discover your gift. Notice I'm not even talking about a woman getting a woman yet. I'm telling you how you have to be prepared. You get your purpose. You understand who you are. And while you understand who you are, you beholding the glory of God. And while you beholding the glory of God, you don't understand this. But you are being transformed into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. Other people can see your transformation. Other people know how you used to be. But guess what? Other people are going to see how God is working in your life. They're going to see it. They're going to say, what happened to him? There were some people uh, told me, they wanted, they said, what happened to Tony? I remember Tony used to party and everything and do all that stuff. What happened to him? I remember when Tony was out there, what happened to him? Was it his wife? Was it Cinderella that made him change? No, Cinderella didn't make me change. I did not change for Cinderella. I changed for Jesus. But Cinderella came in as a gift, an undeserved gift. Brother, once you understand your purpose in life, once you understand to utilize your gift, and then God knows that you have desire because just like God looked at Adam, he looked at Adam and said, it's not good for man to be alone. God going to look at you the same way. God going to say, it's not good for him to be alone. When he looked at me, he said, it's not good for Tony to be alone because he shall be running after old women. But he said, I got one for him. I got one for him. Then, God put Adam to sleep, right? He's going to put you to sleep. What do I mean by sleep? You're not going to even be thinking about no woman. You're going to be doing your thing. You're going to be sleeping in your work, right? And while you're sleeping in your work, your life work, you're going to be awakened. Because when you, you know how you're going to be awakened, just like Adam did. God going to bring a woman in your into your view. And then you're going to wake up just like Adam woke up. And when Adam woke up, he seen the real deal. And her last name was not Holyfield, but he seen the real deal. And what did Adam say? Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I should call a woman because she came from man. When you look at that woman, this is what you're going to say to yourself. You are going, to, she's going to be my wife. You're going to claim her. Just like Adam claimed uh, Eve, you're going to claim that particular woman. Now, what did Jesus do? You know, Jesus is called the second Adam. When you look in the Bible, Jesus is the second Adam. If you don't believe me, Google it. Put in there the second Adam, and they're going to point you to Jesus. How you doing, Sister Jan? So Jesus was the second Adam. So if you want to make a woman love you, you have to have a relationship with God. God got to, you don't know how to love a woman. They are not one. Those relationship coaches, they don't know what they're talking about. 
They tell you how to lust after a woman. They tell you how to use a woman. They don't know how to love no woman. They don't know it. You know why they don't know it? Because they don't go to God's word and tell you how to love a woman. How you doing, Sister Kirkpatrick? D, look at, I tell you what, when you when you start looking at me, go on YouTube or wherever, social media, and go to some of those men's sites and listen to how they tell men how to get a woman. Not what not really majority of them gonna tell other men how to get a woman using street smart. What does that mean by street smart? That means worldly wisdom. They're not gonna tell a man, brother, you need to have a relationship with God first through Jesus. They're not gonna tell you that. They're gonna tell you that suave, that suave uh Rico stuff. They're not gonna tell you the truth. The only way you're going to be able to get a woman to make her love you and remember is by her, her free will. You got to be on point. What did Jesus do? Jesus came into the world and he moved around on his life purpose, right? Even though Jesus went about getting married now, okay? That's an exception. So while you moving, you got a desire, right? You got a desire for a woman, even though you're moving on your grind and stuff, right? At God's time, not your time, not your time, but on God's time, while you were doing everything you were doing, brother, guess what uh, God was doing? He was preparing a woman for you, just like he prepared Eve for Adam. He was preparing a woman that you didn't even know nothing about. You didn't even see her coming. You probably thought those women that you dated and stuff like that, you probably thought some of them was the one. You probably got married and stuff to the, or the, or who you thought was the one, but you found out she wasn't the one. You know why you did it? Because you went, you did it on your own. You did not consult God. I know that car. I walked that road before. I did not consult God when I when I messed up. Am I blaming the woman? No. I'm taking full responsibility because I did not go to God to say, should I do this? No, I did it my way. You understand? And Sister Cynthia said, yeah, some of them teach word away. That's right. They call it, that's right, Sister Cynthia. They call it self-relationship coaches. They, they telling you how to operate, how to use women. That's how they teach, how to use and how to manipulate. And you send me, and here go my, um, here go my cash app. Call me. So we could set up consultation, worldly consultation. Call me so I could tell you how to miss you, how to manipulate a woman. How I could teach you how to get her on your back. How I could teach you how not that you ain't got to do too much. Let her run after you. Don't answer the phone when she calls. You you got to pretend. You got to make. You got to make it seem like you're on your grind. You got to mistreat her. Cause they like running after men that, that act like they don't they don't like them. Have you then they say, have you ever noticed that when you act like you ignore women, they run after you? That's what these relationship coaches tell the guys. I learned from. Them. I said they teaching some crap. They but that's what they say. Just don't act like you're not interested in them. Make her think that you got other women. That's what they teach them. Make sure you don't do too much for her now. Make sure you don't do too much for her. But make sure you get something out of it. They call it smashing. That's what they call this. What these some of these relationships call it. Said. They call it smashing a woman. You all know what smashing means. That's what they teaching guys out there. All that worldly crap. All that satanic stuff. But back to Jesus. The Lord going to bring a woman to you in his time. When the Lord bring a woman into your life on his time. Look, Sister Kirkpatrick said, word of love is different from spiritual. Amen. Love, love only God can teach you about kingdom. That's right, Sister uh, Kirkpatrick. You're right. That's right, Sister Maxine. Smash and dash. That's what they want to do. Smash and dash. Don't worry to me. Smash them. And dash them. 
But what Jesus do? Jesus come in doing his job. You got to come in and do your job. Then what Jesus said, knock, 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 knock. When I say knock on the door, I'm not talking about your physical door. I'm talking about not, you see the Roman? You knock on that hard. Knock, 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 knock. And then she, then she going to look at you. Then she going to say, who are you? Who is it? That's why, that's why I tell you, sister, when a man come to you, you supposed to say, who are you? Who are you? Why are you peeping out that hole? When you in the when you in the face of a man, you're supposed to say, who are you? I'm Tony. Not, not, not. I'm Tony. Who are you? I'm Tony. What you about? I'm about God. What you mean you about God? I love God. Do you love God? You, is that all you talk about? No, I talk about other things, but that's one of the main things I want to. Do you have a relationship with God? You see, sister, you have to talk to a man spiritual. Before you get to all that physical stuff, start talking about the spiritual stuff first. Most of the time, you can run them away when you start talking about spiritual stuff. When you get ready to go out, this is what I'm telling you, sister. Say, okay, I go out with you, but we ain't no, we ain't no do nothing. We ain't doing nothing. What, huh? We ain't doing nothing. What you mean we ain't doing nothing? I'm not having sex with you. Then he see you that you got other children, right? Let's say he see that you got other children and you're not married. And then you say, I'm not having sex with you. You know what I'm going to tell you what he's thinking. Okay, you've been having sex with somebody. You got no other children. But what he doesn't understand is that was the past. You could have been a change at this time. Don't let no man put this over you, sister. You got children. You've been doing some. Don't let no man manipulate you like that. Because most of the men that will manipulate you like that, they got some children out there by other women. But they don't look at it that way. Not, 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 not. Who are? Who there, Tony? What what are you about, Tony? I'm about God business. What do you do? What do you mean? What do I do? What do you do? What what do you want with me, Tony? What do you want? No, I don't want you. I need you. What do you need, Tony? I need you in my life. Why do you need me in my life, Tony? Because I have a purpose. What purpose do you have, Tony? My purpose is God gave me this purpose. And my purpose at this time is to talk to other couples about relationship problems. That's what God put me in my life. Well, where do you work? My work is doing what God wants me to do. Don't confuse my work with my job. Now, you want to ask me what my job is, I'll tell you what my job is. But my work is to do what God want me to do. My job and my work are two different things, sister. Okay. Where are you taking me, Tony? I'm taking you to um, eat. Where, where are we going to eat, Tony? I tell you where, I tell her where we're going. I'm not going to take her to Burger King, okay? I'm not going to take it. You see, let me tell you something, sister. A lot of guys, they would take you to one of those expensive restaurants. This is how you could tell they're not legit. They want to impress you, right? They'll take you to a, a high-end restaurant, and then what they'll start doing is cutting back. They'll start cutting back. Then the next thing you know, you busting Burger King drive through. You know what I mean? So, brothers, my spiritual brother, however you start with a woman, don't decrease, increase, and go beyond. Oh, Tony, do you see me as a wife? I see you as a wife. Tony, do you see me as your wife? Yes, I see you as my wife. Tony, when are we going to do this? I give her a date. You, you, you different. You different. 
Most guys say they don't know. Let's just see where it's going. What what type of relationship we're going to be in, Tony? What type what 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 we what type of relationship? I see you as my wife. I don't see you as my as my a girlfriend. I don't see you as a boo. I don't see you as coming through in the midnight hours. I see you as wife material. That's a woman that a man is serious about. And I want to be, and I guess what? I want to be serious with you. I want to commit to you. And I, and I want you to be my wife. You mean, you mean, um, it's not like Steve Harvey book, 90, you know, the 90 day rule and stuff like that. No, that's Steve Harvey stuff. He using that principle by working a job. How you doing, sister? Uh, so that, uh, I, I hope that I pronounce your name right. Sh Slidell, C-L-Y-D-E-L-L. -L. I hope that I pronounce it right, sister. If I if I didn't, I'm sorry, sister. But anyway, excuse me. I see you as my wife. You see me as your wife. Other guys didn't see me as that wife. How what was your relationship with other men? Well, we went out and then we went out, and then they start talking about when we got to my house. They wanted to come in and, and said they just wanted to hang out for a while. They wanted a nightcap. I told them that, you know, thank you for the date. And I want to go in. I'll see you another time. And then they got pissed off. The attitude started changing. The attitude started changing. Yeah, because I won't let them. My house. I knew what they want to do. They want to get me on their back, on my back. That's what they really want. I seen, I, I seen how he was looking at me at the restaurant. And that's all he talked about. I I had my my I had my my top of my clothes uh buttoned up and he started talking about how my breasts look. He started talking about what he could do with my breasts. I had the little night I fit on it wasn't too tight or nothing like that. And he said, "You show look at all those hips and that and all that butt. You don't talk about hips and butt. Why you don't talk about hips and butt, Tony?" What make you so different? Well, I, I'm not special. I'm not special. I see your hips and all that, but that's that's going to fade in time. I want to know who you are on the inside. That's how I, I want to know who you are on the inside. By the way, that's what I told. I'm giving you all some stuff, some of the conversation my wife and I had. I want to know, because you see, I told my wife something. You have heard it before. I told my wife, I said, look, you look good, but I got to know how you think. That's what I told her. I said, you look good, but I got to know. Because I said, how you look, it's going to fade away in time. I got to know how you think. And then what Jesus do? Jesus get in a relationship with us, right? Jesus want an intimate relationship, right? What does it mean by intimate relationship? He wants to talk to us, right? He like he like personal time, right? A man's supposed to make personal time for a woman. Jesus wants to listen to what we got to say, right? That's right, Sister Teresa. You want to know the mind? Jesus wants to listen to what we got to say. Not only does God want to talk to us, He wants us to talk to Him. So what that mean? That's called communication. So that means you have to set aside time. You're going to have to kill that cell phone and all that kind of stuff so you can have personal time together so we can converse and get to know each other uh, mentally and emotionally. Jesus made an effort to come to us, right? The man got to make an effort to go to the woman. But what did Jesus say? Jesus didn't want to do all the work by himself. Jesus said, hey, come to me. That what you brother need to say, hey, come to me. Jesus said, you know, you come to me 
even though your burden heavy, they'll be light when you come to me. That's what you brother supposed to say. Hey, your burdens eat heavy, it'll be light when you come to me. I got some, I got so many problems on my job and these men and all this other stuff. Don't worry about that. I'm about peace. Those other guys, they were about Satan. They were about conflict. You were messing with somebody else on. You mess, you weren't messing with God's song. You were messing with Satan's song out there with all that conflict and stuff. That's all you were doing. I like you. I like you too. Why do, Tony, why do worldly men say they love you in a short period of time? They say, I love you. They love me, but they don't even know me. Worldly men can't love you. Since if you all don't get nothing else out of this, a worldly man, he can't love you. He could, The best he could do is like you. He doesn't understand love. Relationship culture doesn't understand love. You know why? Because they don't have a relationship with God. If they don't have no relationship with God, there's no way they could love you. There's no if, buts about it. What do Jesus also say? Jesus always said, we, us, our. That's what Jesus said. We, us, our. Jesus said, let me prepare a place for you. Brother, you have to, when you talk to a woman, you say, hey, let me prepare a place for you. Where I am, I want you to be where I am. When Jesus come to us, Jesus tell us the plan. He don't hold back. Jesus tell us the plan. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus said, Broad is the way that lead to death, but then he says something about the straight road, right? The straight and narrow way. Jesus said, come to me because I go to the Father and I'm going to come to you. A spiritual man you supposed to be able to lead and guide a woman when it comes to worship. And when you do these, when you do these things, brother, you need Jesus' help. You have to, that's why you have to have Jesus in you. That woman that the Lord brings to your life, Jesus know that woman. He know the, the number of hairs on her head, even though she wear a wig. Even if she wear a wig, Jesus could count the real hair on her that wig. Sister Maxine said, in my opinion, most worldly men form an attachment real quickly. It scares me. Sister Maxine, the attachment that they form is a physical, it'd be physical. They can't love you. They can't love you. And no way. They will use the word love. These the worldly men, they will even say, let me make love to you. They're not going to say, let me make lust to you. That's what they really need to say. Let me make lust to you. They know if they say, let me make lust to you, they know that they know you ain't gonna do that. So they have to use the, they have to manipulate the word love. And I have told you this before. No man can make love. A man can express love because God is love. So if God is love, the man, let me tell you this. You see, you see my cell phone. You see the cell phone. This is a man. This is a man. You see this card right here. This is this is the spirit of God. Okay, this is the spirit of God, and that outlet that's where energy come from. Now follow me, okay? That's where the energy come from. Now, this phone is going to deplete, right? So when it deplete, I need to get this card right. So when I get this card, what do I do? I put this card into the phone, right? When I put the card into the phone, what happens? I noticed that it was it would show where it's at. Then it started increasing. You know why it started increasing? Because it's uh 
It's that source, right? So it's getting power. That's how it is. You see, sister, this is a man. This is the spirit of God. The spirit of God must at all times get plugged in like that. Plug in. And you see, unlike a cell phone, this has to be plugged in 24 7, seven days a week. And it goes to the energy source, which is God the Father. Remember what Jesus said, I am the, you are the branch, I am the vine. You remember Jesus said that? Jesus said, you are the branch, I am the vine. You see, when you look at a tree, fruits do not grow out of the branch. If you notice that fruits do not grow out of the branch, it has a vine. Just think about it. It has a vine. It has a root. The tree have a root. All the nut nutrients and everything come from the root. So the man has to be rooted in something. He has to be rooted in the in God, or he got to be rooted in Satan. He got to be rooted on the rock, or he gonna be or rooted on the sand. It all come down to the foundation. What is that man's foundation? Then the man will say, like Jesus said, Jesus said, I want us to be one. What does Jesus mean? I want us to be one. Jesus said, I'm in you and you are in me. That's intimacy. We're not talking about the physical part yet, right? So a man has to be willing to expand himself just like Jesus did. What did Jesus ultimate thing? Jesus came to die for the world, right? Because that's love. Jesus came with a giving mentality. Remember Jesus said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. That's what a man's supposed to do. When it comes to a woman, a man's supposed to serve. Just like Jesus. And the woman's supposed to be like the church. You see, now it get down to how to make a woman love you. You have to plant love into that woman. When you plant love into that woman, guess what happened? You're going to see some fruits. Sister, this is what love is for a man. You, sister, you want to feel love. Men want to know love. Understand that. Men want to know love. You want to feel love. In order for a man to uh, know love, men look at love as respect. Which leads to this, as it is written in Colossians 3.18. Listen carefully, sister. As it is written in Colossians 3.18, Colossians 3.18, Colossians 3.18. It said, wives, submit yourselves to your husband as it is fitting in the Lord. Listen to it again. It's God's word, sister. It said in Colossians 3.18, it said, wives, submit yourselves to your husband as it is fitting in the Lord. It did not say wives submit to your boyfriend. It did not say wives submit to your boo. It did not say wives submit to your, your midnight rider. It said a husband. So sister, what position you have to be in to get lower? You understand? What position you need to be in to get lower the right way? And then we're not talking about that, that song that Johnny Gill had uh, uh, years ago, Loving You the Right Way. That You see, Johnny Gill said, Loving You the Right Way. Then he said the word stroke. Uh -uh, we ain't talking about that kind of love. We're not talking about the Key Sweat, the Gerald Avert, and the Johnny Gill song, you know, My Body All Over Your Body. It's a nice song. You see, stuff like that are for married people. Your body, my body. You see, God won't, when it comes to the physical part, 
sister and brother when it comes to physical part you have to do it the right way i did it the wrong way for some years i was out there but i had to do it right i had to do it god's way and i have told you this before my brother and sister if you're just going with somebody or if you just dating someone and when you become if you get physical intimate the only thing you could do is wet up each other, get up and clean you, clean that stuff off you, and then you get soul tied to them. And then you break up. And then you get a sour attitude, brother, against women. And some of you sisters get a sour attitude against men because you were doing it your way. You weren't doing it God's way. So, brother, how to make a woman love you? Love God first. Go about doing God's will first. Delight in the Lord. And when you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Sister, if you want to feel love, simply respect the man. That's all you have to do, sister, respect him. And I talk about, when I said the man, I talk about a spiritual man. I'm not, I'm not talking about a word of man. You have to be in the right relationship. That's the key. The man in a relationship with God, you in a relationship with God, both of you in a relationship with God, both of you allow God to teach you, guide you, and show you how to love one another. God knows how to show you how to love the man, sister. Brother, God will show you how to love the woman because he is love. He is the power source. Brother and sister, if you're not doing it God way, you cannot experience what I call the utopia way of loving. You see, when you love a man or woman the right way God wants you to, it goes beyond the sex. The sex will be beyond. You see, some of you, brother and sister, you think you think just because y'all have sex, that's good, right? You just get a small fragment of what it's like to do it God's way. It cannot be explained when you do it God's way. The sexual part, it cannot be explained. It, it can only be experienced. And then outside of the bed, outside of the bed, because remember I told you all at one time, the bed is made for two purposes. The bedroom made for two purposes. That's rest and relaxation. Rest and relaxation. Rest and relaxation. That's the only thing the bedroom for. It's not for trouble. It's not for conflict. It's for peace. Outside the bed, you're going to be outside the bed more than you be in the bed. That's why you got to have a, be with the right person. Let me tell you something, brother. When you love a woman the right way, thank you, Sister Campbell. When you love a woman the right way, that woman going to love you in a way a worldly woman cannot love you. A worldly woman think that giving you sex is love. She think making you a pot, she think uh, making you some poker bean and hot dogs is love. She think all that kind of stuff, she think worldly. You too good for a worldly woman, brother. You too good for her. Some of you sister, you too good for these worldly guys. Sister, when you get with a worldly man, you're reducing your, your value. Brother, when you get with a worldly woman, you re, you reducing your value. You want to know what a real, you want to know what a real, um, how, not, let me see, what did Kevin Sam used to call it? High value. Kevin Sam used to say, a high value man. You women want a high value man, right? That's what Kevin Sam said. You want to have be a high value man? You have the high value man is supposed to make six figures and all that kind of crap, right? A high value man, what did Jesus say? Jesus said that a man's life does not consist of the things he owns. That's what Jesus said. Kevin Samuel said six figures. Jesus Christ said a man's life does not consist of what he, he has. Jesus said, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? So the most important thing, sister, from a man is his soul. 
Brother, the most important thing from a woman is her soul. When you get with a woman, a brother, you got to think about her soul more than her body. Her body going to weather away, or weather away and your body going to weather away. The body that you in now, brother, it's going to be renovated when Jesus comes. So the body that you in is going to be renovated when Jesus comes. So in the meantime, you got to redeem the time. You understand, my brothers? You understand, my sister? Guess what? We had a good dinner tonight. And I enjoyed talking to you, brothers and sisters. I really enjoyed it. When I come to you, brothers and sisters, to talk to you all about relationships, I come to you to help you to avoid a lot of pitfalls when it comes to relationship. Do I know all about relationship? No, I don't. Jesus know all about relationships, but I have experience, good and bad. I, I Since I do consultation, I, I listen to other men and other women. They, have, they messed up like I messed up, but God way is the best way. The best relationship, brothers and sisters, that you need to have is a relationship with Jesus. That's the primary relationship that you all need to have. I always remember that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Make sure your relationship with Jesus is good. Brother before woman, sister before man. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus will never disappoint you. Let you down. A man and woman, they will fall. And let me tell you something, brother. When it comes to a woman, the woman that you get, she's going to make mistakes, okay? Let me tell you, brother, you're not going to get a perfect woman. Some of you looking for that 10. She doesn't exist. 10 doesn't exist. Some of you sister, you looking for a perfect man. He doesn't exist. Only Adam and Eve were perfect. They don't exist no more. I don't know what it's like to be perfect. You don't know what it's like to be perfect. So why would you look for a perfect man or woman when you, you don't even know what perfection look like? If, prefer, if perfection came your way, brother, or sister, if perfection come your way, you wouldn't know how to handle it. The only thing a perfect person would do is you would feel just like this with a perfect person. Jesus was the only perfect man a human to walk on this earth for 33 years. Jesus. Brother, love a woman. Before I go, listen to this. This is how a word of man love a woman, and this is how a, a spiritual man love a woman. A word of man love a woman from inside, outside in. Body, <coughs> excuse me, body, possible soul. A spiritual man love a woman inside out. Spirit, soul, and body. Because a spiritual man knows that that woman has a spirit. If it's a spiritual man, he's looking for the spirit of God in that woman. After that, the soul. that Who that woman really is. Like I told my wife, Cinderella, I got to know how your mind is. You see, Cinderella... Our mind is part of her soul. I know she had a will and emotion, but I want to know how her mind works. You see, I couldn't go by Cinderella's feeling, even though, you know, I was all that in a bag of chips. I couldn't go by her feeling. I had to go by her thinking. Is our relationship perfect? No. Will we get angry or upset in our relationship? Yes, because we do sometimes, but we don't go a long period of time. We squash it. We squash it in a hurry. Because all we would do if we hold an animosity against one another, we wasting time. You cannot get time back that you have lost. Brother and sister, guess what? Thank you so much for coming to dinner. 
Those of you that are on the book, like and share if you don't mind, okay? I'm not going to hold no going up to you or nothing. I, I still let you come to the dinner table, okay? Also, those of you that are on the tube, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe and invite other brothers and sisters to subscribe to this channel so they could come to dinner. Please like and share. If you don't like and share, what well, I hope that you like and share, but make sure you hit that notification. So when it comes to dinner time, my two brothers and sisters, you'll get a notification when I'm ready to serve that good soul food to you, for you, okay? I love you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for spending dinner with me. And make sure you take one of these plates with you because it's plenty of food, okay? Take some of this soul food with you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Peace out.